Okay, this is going to be a tutorial on how to create a tube weldment assembly and create the copes on the tubes, unwrap the tubes, and then create a drawing uh, that will be eventually be able to be cut out with, with scissors physically on a piece of paper and wrapped around the tube so that the lines can be transferred to the tube for cutting manually. What we're going to do is start with a new part, file new part. And in this part, we're going to lay out our tube assembly with sketch elements. Um, if it's a planar tube assembly, then we could just use a regular sketch. Uh, since this is going to be a 3D landing gear tube weldment, we're going to use a 3D sketch. 2D sketch obviously lets you sketch in a plane. 3D sketch lets you sketch in any plane. So we're going to go to sketch, 3D sketch. First step, I like to just lay out some basic construction lines. Um, these dotted lines are construction lines. They won't be used, there's the checkbox for construction. They won't be used to generate any geometry, uh, any physical body geometry. They're just used for reference and to help us sketch and visualize the sketch. Okay. We're going to constrain, oh, by the way, reference your triad here. This is going to be along X. This is going to be along Z. And create a third one. It's going to be along Y. And just for convention's sake, flip it like that so Z is facing up. So control select all these and set them equal to each other. That will make them equal in length. Okay. Let's start with the basic axle. I just selected the um, main line sketch element. And I want to control select these and say they're collinear. Let's say we have a 10 inch axle tube. Okay. Create another point. Throw it in the space, control select these two, that's going to be the midpoint. That, let's just say that our tubes converge at that point. All our tubes are going to converge. The next step is to throw out uh, the end of our tube where it would intersect the fuselage side scans. Maybe an easy way to do this is just uh, plain old XYZ. So let's say that we know uh, Z, we're going to drop 10 inches. So let's say Z is 10 inches. Uh, y would be, say, 10 inches away, arbitrary. Um, and then X, let's say that we're setting back 3 inches off of this line. All we'd have to do is draw our lines and connect those two dots. Oh, by the way, throw an anchor on here so this doesn't move. And just so you know, that's 3, 10, and 10. So to have a complete mirror on the other side, all we need to do is just change the y value to negative. So it'll be 3, negative 10, 10. So throw another dot out there. 3, negative 10, 10. Set an anchor there. That just constrains it in space, fixes it in space. All right, so now we have our axle, and two tubes that are going to converge on that axle at the midpoint. And this is just one side of the fuselage. For instance, this would be, be where the tire would be mounted. These are just support struts for that axle. Okay, now we've got our 3D sketch. Uh, just so you see it, here is a um, let's get the view here. All right, that would be a side view of what we're trying to do. Um, that would be a top view. All right. Now let's save that as 
an assembly called tube assembly. And I've already done this in the past, so I'm just going to replace what, what I had. Okay. All right, the next step is to define uh, the profile of the tubing material that we're going to be using. Uh, SolidWorks has a very nice feature called a weldment, which will create the structural members in your weldment automatically and set up all the coping joints automatically. First thing you need to do, though, is add to your library, your weldment's library, profile library, uh, the profile for the material you've chosen that you purchased for your tube assembly. The way to do that is start with a new part on the front plane sketch. Obviously we're going to use circular tube. Set that to let's say a one inch diameter and some off-the-shelf tubing maybe 870 ID one inch OD. So there's our profile. Now the default um, pierce point which will trace the 3D sketch elements that we created in that other part will be this origin. That's what we want. We want it to follow along the center of the tube. So we're going to go ahead and exit the sketch and we're going to file save as. By the way make sure you have the sketch checked when you do that. And you're going to save this not as a part but as a library feature part. SolidWorks saves all of their weldments in your default install directory under Lang English Weldment Profiles. In my case I've installed SolidWorks on G Drive so I can quickly paste that in. Okay, Now SolidWorks gives you a way to organize your weldment profiles by folders. The folders will manifest themselves in drop-down menus later on when we select the weldment profile we're going to use. Um, so the first level of folders is just whether you have English or uh, metric units. We're going to do this in inches. Um, and we're, you can create a new folder called round tube if one doesn't already exist. Select round tube. And then I've already created a file called 1inch OD 870ID. So I can just select that. You're, you're going to create a new one. But I can just select that name and hit save and I'm going to override it. Yes. Now that's saved, so I can close that. Okay, the next step is to go back to our tube assembly with our 3D sketch and we're going to create a weldment. Now, this is the weldment tab in the command manager. You may have to right click the command manager and uh, this is where you enable those tabs. There's my weldment tab. We're going to create a weldment. You can see the weldment feature pops up. The next thing we're going to do is add a structural member. Structural member, this is where those folders are. You remember these two folders. You can select inch or metric. You can select round tube. And then our file pops up. Um, we're going to create a new group. First group is just going to be that base axle tube. And the next group is going to be these two coped intersecting tubes. If you want to, you can create some, you can get fancy with some gaps, which will create gaps between your tubes for welding purposes. Uh, we don't need any of that here. And you can also define your corner treatment. You can see we have overlapping left and right versus a, a mitered end. We want the mitered ends, obviously, for tube. Um, and they're not a planar intersection, so that, that only makes sense. And we're going to hit OK. Now that's created our weldment assembly. And what we need to do is, since we have all of our bodies in one part, we need to make sure and create external SolidWorks part files for each of these tubes. We know that this tube down here isn't being cut at all. It's the main axle tube. Just these two tubes are the only ones we're going to have to cope or miter. So I'm going to click on that structural body, that structural member body, and insert into new part. It's going to take that 
insert into a new part and I'm going to just call it tube assembly one. Okay. Okay, the next step, we need to unfold this tube. The easiest way to do that in SolidWorks is just to create a, a slit in the tube just like the tube was originally manufactured. It, it was originally roll formed into this shape and so we're going to create this slit where that weld joint is and then unfold that. Sketch on the end. And constrain one end of that line concentric to the middle. The other end constrained to the out, oops, on the outside. And we can call that vertical. Another thing we can do just to be fancy is also create a sensor or an equation for the diameter of this that we're going to use later. So I just threw down a circle. I'm going to control select the outside of the tube in the circle and I'm going to call them co-radial which means they're going to be the same exact size in the same location in space. And I want to make sure and change that to construction geometry. Now that that's construction geometry I'm going to dimension it. I know that that dimension is already defined, it's telling me it is. I want it to be driven by the tube size. Um, that way it becomes sort of like a sensor. And I want to make a note that this is called the D1 dimension number one and sketch number one. I'm copying that value there. Hit exit. Okay, now I want to insert, I want to go tools, rather equations. I want to create a global variable called diameter and I want to set it equal to that uh, D1 sketch one that I copied earlier. Just put it in quotes and you can see if I hit tab that it evaluates to one inch which is what it showed up earlier when we were sketching. Hit OK. And now we're going to go ahead and create our cut. We want to select our sketch that we made and say extrude cut. Uh, we want it just to go in one direction. This is our slit. Um, through all is fine. I want it to be a very thin, thin slice. So I'm going to call it one ten thousandth of an inch and hit OK. And you can see that now it's created a very, very thin slice in the tube. Okay. Now we're going to go to sheet metal and insert bins. This is where we select the element that we want to unwrap. Go to the inside of your tube and sketch and select one of the edges of your slit. Okay. On this one, we want this to be equal to the global variable diameter and then hit divided by two because it's actually wanting a radius. Oops. Okay. K factor is one. Hit OK. That turned this part into a sheet metal part that we can now unwrap. By moving this bar up to the flattened bend, it suppresses in this time order of time the process bend feature, so it'll be in the flat state. Okay, the next thing we can do. If you'll notice that the top view is kind of um, not oriented properly, not oriented the way we want because uh, the original planes are askew to uh, the final flat pattern that we have. So the easiest way to handle that is just select two orthogonal faces, control select them, hit normal two, and you'll see that we're now on edge. Hold down your shift key and push down down arrow and it'll pop up uh, in, in a flat pattern view that we're looking for. Hit the space bar and this button updates the standard views to what we currently see in the view screen. Hit that button and then we want to define that as the top view. Are you sure you want to make the change? Yes. Alright, now we can see that we have a top view, we have a left view, right view. So that's what we're looking for. 
Hit save. Now we're gonna make. Now we're gonna make a 2D drawing of our flat pattern. File, make drawing from part. Select your eight and a half by eleven paper. And drag in a top view. Down here in your uh, view properties, you want to use a custom scale one to one. That way you can get the full scale when you print it out. The next step is to create some reference lines. We know we don't want to create a, a full size piece of paper. We want a piece of paper for each end of the tube. So I'm just throwing down some sketch lines here that we can reference. I want this sketch element to be tangent to the most extreme edge of that face. And I want to do about an inch and a half of paper on each end here. All right, and I also want to know what the overall length is of the tube, so we can cut the tube to length first. Okay, now use your break to create a broken view of these tubes, and now you have a flat pattern. All you have to do is print that out, uh, cut. Cut along this shape. Reference this line. Uh, so you're going to cut along this end, obviously, and then and then cut up here. And then you're going to have an inch and a half uh, template on each end that you can reference for a total length of 4.63 inches. And what you're going to do is repeat that for the other tube, and you're going to come up with four end treatments, and you're really only going to use two where they intersect that axle. I uh, hope this was helpful.